What's going on, y'all? This is your boy Beasley. Hope you all are staying positive and motivated out there. I'm coming at you guys today with the review of The Real Housewives of Potomac, Season 5, Episode 6, The Text Heard Around the Lake House. Now, this review was late boots. I do apologize, but let's just go ahead and get into it. So we pick up where we um, left off last week. We see Wendy and Ashby arguing at the din dinner table. Wendy's calling basically everything but the child of God. She calls Ashley a brokey. She calls her a bug. And she really just brags about her four degrees to Ashley. Now, I was on Wendy's side last week. But however, I will say one thing that annoys me about other people is when they are just braggadocious and constantly bragging about their accomplishments. Yes, you got your four degrees. That's a big accomplishment. You're a doctor. Yes. But at the same time, the rest of the world is not going to bow down to you because of that, because you spent all that time and effort getting a degree. And especially when we live in a day and age where degrees don't even matter anymore, Wendy. Like, you're going to have to come out, come out with another thing to come at people with, like another comeback. But... We go on, and then we see Winnie in her confessional. She says, I didn't say her husband was broke. I called Ashley broke, and her booty hole was broke. She broke broke. That was a good one. I'll give her that. So they then toast to the chef. Like, they basically, they don't even resolve the issue. Like, Monique kind of calms everybody down. They toast to the chef, and then the night ends. So that night, Candace and Wendy, they go to their room and they talk. Wendy says that she held her ground. Basically, like she was asking, like, Candace, I did right. Like, how did I do? Like, and Candace was like in her confessional, you know, even though she appreciates somebody going at Ashley for once, it, it doesn't really make sense for her to say that Ashley's fake when Wendy literally just met her. Like, they just met during that trip. I mean, they met prior, but, like, this is the first time actually even, like, having an interaction. But Candace basically just gives her advice and tells her that just let everybody else see who you are authentically. Like, just continue to be yourself. So everybody wakes up the next morning, and they go downstairs, and they decide to cook breakfast. Giselle and Monique bring it upon themselves to have a pancake contest. Meanwhile, we see Ashley upstairs. She's uh, breastfeeding her baby, or just feeding her baby. And she tries to call Michael. Michael doesn't answer. And in her confession, she says, you know, ever since having this baby, like, I've just gotten used to Michael not being there. And of course, because he's out cheating every night, Ashley. Like, what do you expect? <laughs> but downstairs, they finish the pancakes. And they continue to rate the pancakes. Now, Giselle's pancakes, even though they were ugly to Robin and a few other few people, they said that they tasted good. Monique's pancakes were aesthetically pleasing, but she cooked her pancakes with olive oil. And I'm just like, who does that? Like, maybe if you have like a non-stick pan and put a little dash of oil so it doesn't stick to it, but like, really Monique, come on. So, Monique ends up winning the contest, and the Candace Shadley in her confessional says these pancakes were a, the perfect metaphor for both of the women. Giselle's pancakes were a little messy, but good on the inside. Monique's pancakes were aesthetically pleasing, but nothing on the inside. And then Karen straight up says that Giselle's pancakes taste like shit. Now, I disagree with Candace, because for one, Giselle, there's no good inside of her. Like, she is just a vile woman to me. And then Monique, honestly, is the opposite, who has a heart of gold, even though she is coming off a little messy to me this season. So later on, Chris calls Monique and says that whenever they come, all the husbands are going to come down to the lake house tomorrow for Monique's birthday. And then Chris was supposed to be the one grilling food for everybody, but Chris basically tells her that he doesn't want to do the grilling because he's not going to have time to really spend any time with anybody, and that he wants to get stuff catered and said. And Monique in her confessional, she's like, you know what, I'm not going to argue, but this bothers me. Like, why can't he just do something for me? Like, not having to outsource staff to get the task done. Like, why can't he cater to me for once? But she's like, I'm just going to put this on the box right next to the Candace box. And she said at some point, one of those boxes are going to tip over. And they're planting seeds for Chris and Monique to have a, like a confrontation. I, I really hope... I hope it's just for the cameras. Like, I really hope their marriage isn't really going on the rocks, per se. I think them two are a very solid couple, and I don't want to see... Like, I really don't want them to be hit with the reality show curse. 
So Wendy and Giselle, they go off to for have a walk in like some cat suits looking like Cheetah and Catwoman. And Giselle says, like, you know, Wendy, she's cool, like she's my soror, but after her attacking Ashley, like I just I kinda didn't want to get to know her anymore after that. But she they go on this walk so Giselle could kind of pick her brain a bit. And then Wendy basically tells her that her new baby isn't old enough to be without her. And seeing Ashley was the realization of that. And she's like, I really wish that I would have been able to bring my baby too. And then Giselle tells her that like, you know, that's all fine and dandy, but like, you shouldn't be mad at Ashley. You should actually be mad at Karen because Karen's the one that called you, uh, basically called you a floozy freeloader. And Wendy takes the bait, like Giselle, like something in her green eyes just mind fucks everybody. Like Giselle was able to just manipulate this whole entire cast and nobody ever sees it. Like, I honestly, I'm not even mad at Giselle at this point. Like, we got to get a show going. She's the bone character. She's the charade of the group. Ain't got really much of anything going on outside of Jamal Bryant, which that whole storyline is fake. So she's just going to go ahead and carry the bone. And these girls allow her. And they never catch on to her mess. Like, it's, it's just really comical at this point. So the ladies go off, they go fishing, they grab the canoes, the girls are constantly complaining. Monique teaches them how to bait hooks, they're complaining even more, like they they want to be in a glamorized vacation, they're not trying to get down and dirty and actually do camping activities. So while they're fishing, Ashley and Wendy decide to have a talk. Wendy forcibly apologized, like it was hard to get the apology out of her, but she apologizes for her delivery towards Ashley. And then Ashley then apologizes for keeping up the bad behavior and keeping up the mess. Now, I don't like Ashley, but one thing I admire about her is that she does not back down from a fight at all. Like, that is the one positive I can give Ashley. Like, she will go there, and she will continuously go there, there no matter how loud and wrong she is. Like, she will continue to drive the point home. So Karen, in her confessional shades, Wendy, she's just like, I don't really know what version of Wendy I'm getting because just the other night she was just popping off on everybody and now all of a sudden like she wants to be best friends with everybody. Like, she's basically like, I got my good eye on Wendy. Karen, you know, she's, she's jealous. That's what it is. Wendy also expresses that she is sad to be away from her baby. Like her baby was premature and she needs to breastfeed like on a daily basis. And then Ashley also admits that she has postpartum depression and that she doesn't even feel like herself after having Michael Jr. And it was, it was a really cute bonding moment. Them two honestly could have been bonding from the very beginning. I mean, they're both new moms, but it is what it is. They buried the hatchet. So everybody is getting ready for dinner. And then we see Giselle trying to call Jamal and there's no service. I mean, did Monique give Wendy the Wi-Fi? Like, come on, Giselle. And then she admits that she doesn't see Jamal all that often. And I'm just like, yep, he's only around when the cameras are around. So Ashley FaceTimes Michael. Ashley in confessional admits that Michael absolutely hates playing second to their baby. Michael says that he was closing some deals and went out drinking that night, despite the fact that them two weren't drinking for like the past seven months. And we all know where he was out doing that night. So Karen, we see her calling Ray. Again, they're trying to drive this fake storyline home. Ray is not saying, I miss you, I love you. And then the, it was really edited. You could tell they like cut the entire conversation between them. And then she just got up and like he just like, oh, I got to go play golf. And that was the end of it. I was just like, that was some lazy editing. So the ladies, they all gather around. And Candace expresses the fact that she looks up to the ladies' mothering skills. Like seeing Ashley, even though she's not all there, but seeing her, like, Ashley makes her, like, confident in the fact that there's going to be trials and tribulations, but I could be a mom, too, at some point. So the ladies, they eat, and it's quiet. Everybody's bored. Like, there is absolutely nothing going on. So Giselle, she suggests that everybody do a pageant off between Candace and Ashley, which actually was a cute idea. They both showcased their pageant walk. They both did a great job, in my opinion. They ended up doing the questions. So Giselle asked the questions because she's the judge, I guess. She asked Candace, how does it feel being so short? And then Candace says, being, ver says, being vertically challenged is a blessing because it taught her to reach up high for the stars and reach her dreams. Good answer. Giselle then asked Ashley, how does it feel having a larger forehead than everybody? 
And then Karen in her confessional was like, really? Like, if anybody, you're the one to talk with your little tree stump legs. And Giselle does have some kinkles, y'all. Like, they don't really show off her legs like that, but, like, Giselle got some kinkles. That's why she be wearing those. That's why she wears, like, pants and boots all the time, so you can't really see them. Karen's confessionals this season are just, like, on point. Like, Karen and T'Challa, in my opinion, are, like, the queens of this season. So, Ashley then answers, you know, in most cultures, having a big forehead represents beauty and intelligence, and I have both. And she also compliments Candy, Candace calling her fantastic and great at thing, and great things come in small packages. Then the talent portion happens. Ashley, she gives us this flicked twerk. And then Candace, she lazily sings happy birthday. And then, even though Candace, like she's not a bad singer, but if she would maybe get some lessons, maybe like a year or two years worth of lessons, she would be where she needs to be. And if she sung a different song that actually challenged her vocal range, like, she would be there. But they end up picking Candace as the winner, which I, I would have picked Candace too. So later on, the girls, they get ready. And then Candace ends up getting an infamous text about Michael. Like, a friend of a friend ends up texting her that she saw Michael at the bar last night saying that he had both a boyfriend and a wife. And then he gets, she gets the picture of Michael's face and then Candace is like, oh my God. And then the, the way this came off to me, it came off a little forced. Like it came off as those text messages were planted. Like I don't feel like Candace got those messages from a friend of a friend. Like I feel like she got that from production to be honest. Like they have been after Michael's ass ever since he grabbed one of the production, one of the cameramen by the ass that last season. And then on top of that, it don't matter. Like, none of it matters at this point. Because, spoiler alert, Ashley is pregnant again. Ashley is having a second baby by Michael. So, at the end of the day, like, them two are still together. Ashley is just there for the bag. She is just there to collect, like, any type of money she can get out of him. Like, I feel like Ashley knows this relationship is not going to last, but she is going to do what she can to secure the bag and secure her, fu her future. So, it is what it is, y'all, but we're going to go and let this storyline ride out like we always do. And then they're going to come to the reunion with... They're going to find a way to duck and dodge this whole entire situation like they have been since they've been on this show. So, Candace does the wrong thing and runs to the wrong person which is Giselle and she spills the beans to Giselle, to Giselle. And, there's, and then Giselle I'm having a hard time saying her name today I don't know why but then Giselle basically tells her like you need to tell her at some point like maybe you should bring it up about at the dinner you know trying to get a scene once again so they arrive at the crab shack they are all overdressed everybody's staring at them like they look like they were going to the club in my opinion so they all sit down and then they eat Robin admits that she is frustrated with Juan, mainly because his lazy ass forgot to send the kids to school. <laughs> I would have been pissed too. Like, really? Like, I'm gone for two days and you can't do one thing? And then Monique admits that she's frustrated with Chris not catering to her. Like, he just really wants her to pamper her for once. Like, she pampers him. Like, she waits on him hand and foot like a handmaiden. And then he just doesn't really do anything. He gets other people to do things for her. And then she's like, no, I want it to come from you. Like, I want it to come from a genuine place, a genuine heart. So they then ask Karen about Ray. And she admits that Ray misses her, but she's basically cher But Ray is basically just cherishing every day at this point. Like, he's just happy to be... I think Ray is retired, so he's just really out there just having fun. Wendy in her confessional, she's like, Karen is so fake. Like, I don't know who she's trying to convince, me or herself, but, like, something about her is just very inauthentic. So they then go down and ask Ashley about Michael, and she admits that he had a very big dinner last night, and he thinks that, she also thinks that they had a, uh, a boy's night out because he was very hungover the next day. So Candace is sitting there with her damn stomach all the way up to her damn chest. And she's just like, oh, fuck. Like, am I going to tell her now? Like, is somebody going to tell her? She's very nervous to tell Ashley because they literally just got back on good footing. And she doesn't want to ruin the relationship. But Candace and Giselle are really just sitting at the table just like, like they, could, they could just shit a ton of bricks, basically. And that's where the episode ends. This episode, it was... 
cute. I give it like a like a C plus, C minus, one of the two. Um, I'm excited to see the next episode. I think the next episode is gonna be way better when the men come in. But those are my views on this episode of The Real Housewives of Potomac. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'm going to come at you guys with some more content. I promise, y'all. Like, I just had, I've been taking a lot of mental health breaks lately because I've been kind of dealing with a little bit of a depression patch. But I'm going to push through it, y'all. So just pray for your boy. Love you guys and the love's all for real. Take care.